I'm Irish Physio, and this is James, and today we're going to start talking about Baxter's nerve entrapment. So the Baxter's nerve is a nerve that runs along the inside of your foot, and when it gets entrapped, it can lead to pain along the inner aspect of your heel. So this can be often misdiagnosed in patients as it is a common area along the inside of your foot where you can get plantar fascia pain or tib post pain, and some one in five patients may have an entrapment of the Baxter's nerve as it passes underneath the foot. So with patients who have a Baxter's nerve entrapment, the symptoms that they may describe is pain in that area where it does not get better as the day goes as with exercise, it gets actually worse. So that's different to our plantar fascia pain or with sometimes our tip post pain. It's also pain worse towards the end of the day as the foot starts to tighten up a bit more, that can potentially be leading to a little bit more entrapment of the area as well. And it's also not worse first thing in the morning. So they, these are the kind of signs and symptoms that we would look out for to differentiate between what is a Baxter's nerve entrapment or a plantar fascia pain or a tib post pain. Three main causes for uh, Baxter's nerve entrapment. Uh, one is direct trauma. Uh, so we see that uh, typically in football where someone has a tackle and studs get placed on the inside of the ankle, uh, which can cause uh, pain and sometimes tingling pins and needles on the inside or inside of the foot and inside of the heel bone. Uh, incorrectly fitted shoes uh, where the inside part of the shoe rubs off the inner ankle, that can cause Baxter's nerve entrapment. Other causes include uh, ill-fitted insoles. This is where the arch or the medial arch of the insole rises too soon and it pushes up into the inner aspect of the heel uh, and that can cause a Baxter's nerve entrapment. So for diagnosis of a Baxter's nerve entrapment, it is quite tough to get that accurate diagnosis. So sometimes patients will have been treated for a few different things before getting that diagnosis that it is that area that is entrapped. So we would usually get patients sent for an MRI to rule in and rule out other structures that may be causing that pain around the area. So the MRI might rule in, it rule in if it is a tib post pain or a tib post tendon issue or plantar fascia pain. And you can also get that done with an ultrasound scan as well. Um, when it comes to entrapment of the nerve, it is tough to sometimes pick up if there is any irritation of that nerve on an MRI or an ultrasound. So it is true a process of elimination that this diagnosis is usually delivered. For treatment of a Baxter's nerve entrapment, uh, it's really important to identify the cause, uh, whether it's a insole trauma or shoes. Uh, if we don't change that, regardless of how good our treatment is, uh, the symptoms won't improve. So once we've figured, out, figured that out, we look at things like nerve gliders, uh, these are simple exercises uh, such as uh, slump sliders in a seated position or lying on your back. Uh, we can link some videos to them below. This, this encourages the nerve to get moving again after it has become inflamed. Anti-inflammatories can help calm down the nerve uh, and in more irritable cases we would look at a steroid injection into the medial compartment of the ankle. Uh, again, you're, it's to reduce inflammation in the area. Sometimes after you have an injection, it might be recommended to have spend a couple of weeks inside a walker boot before weaning out and looking at strengthening the intrinsic muscles of the foot as well as the key stabilizers of the ankle. So if you have a diagnosis of a Baxter's nerve entrapment or if you have any questions, please comment below and we hope we'll be able to get back to you.